we're going to create a simple part that should share some of the features of the design tree and allow us to get started in controlling some of our parametric designs. To get started, let's roll over to the sketch menu. We'll click sketch and we'll click the front plane. We're going to draw our generic shape. So we'll just make sure that our automated features don't do what we don't want them to do and do what they are supposed to do. So watch those midpoints and you can align your part just like that. We can now smart dimension. Know that this distance is two. If your part gets a little wonky, you can try to fix those manually before you mess with too many dimensions. So you can turn off your smart dimension and just grab the part that gets a little screwy. What I'd like to do is make sure that this top and this part are collinear. So I'll select that. Now that'll keep them uh, on the same plane there. I'm going to coincident this point with my origin here. And that should fully define my sketch. I'll exit my sketch. I'm going to go to my features tab and I'll do an extrude. I'm going to extrude this at 2.5. And I'm going to do mid-plane. So that way I've split the difference. I have 1.25 on this side and 1.25 on that side. I'll hit the check and I've created the base for my feature. Let's make sure that we name our features. So I'll call this base. You can slow click or right click and rename. We're now going to draw a semicircle off this part here. So we'll flip the part over, go to our sketch tab, click sketch, select that bottom face. And we shouldn't need any dimensions. I'll click the circle, hover over until I get my midpoint, and then I'll click the end point. If I hit escape, it's fully defined. I'll go to my features tab. I will extrude. And as I rotate my part, I'm going to do up to surface, and I'm going to click this top surface here. I want to make sure that I merge the results so it's one part. I'll click check, and I've now just completed that semicircle on the end. My next step is to add a hole. So I'm going to go to the hole wizard, and I'm going to highlight over this face. I want to make sure that I have a hole selected. I'm in inches. And I'm going to use drill sizes. I want the hole to be three quarters, so I'll make sure it says three quarters. It's going to be a through all hole. And I'm going to click positions. You can click this top face here. And then I'm going to hover over this edge, find my center point, and lock it there. I'll hit check mark, and I should have my hole centered right on that dimension. I'll drop down my sketch menu and make sure that everything is fully defined. I can tell because there's no minus symbols. From here, we're going to adjust a few of the parameters. We can go back to our original sketch from base extrude and edit the sketch. By double clicking on a dimension, we can change that and our design should automatically update. I'd like to add another feature into the sketch like a fillet. I can select my fillet. I'll put in my radius here at 0.25 and then I'll select the two edges I'd like to fill it. I'll hit check to make sure that that finalizes. I will exit my sketch and then I'll look at my updated design. 
to make sure everything is up to date, you can always hit the rebuild command and that'll make sure that everything is at its uh, topmost feature. Let's edit the extrude so we can edit the feature now. And let's change that to two and we'll hit check. If you'd like to adjust the semicircle, we can edit the sketches or the feature. And we'll hit check. We can also right click our part and say tree display, show flat tree view. And that separates everything in order minus some of these combined features. So we've done a sketch, we've done a basic tree, we did a sketch, we did a semicircle, then we did the whole, which is comprised of the two sketches. So I can break down our history a little bit nicer. But now I'm going to keep it all together. We can also right click annotations and show feature annotations. From here, we can take specific features of selected items and adjust. So if this hole needed to change, I can live change that dimension on the go. So that could be 0.7. And that'll change and update right away. I check that and rebuild, my hole changes live. If I need to change that back. I can say 0.75. and then rebuild, and my hole changes right back. So we can edit those dimensions for the whole model part by right-clicking and displaying and showing feature annotations. The last piece of this puzzle will be to look at the properties of our part. Click on the materials or look at the part by right-clicking, going down to the material drop-down, and we'll click Edit Material. We'll select uh, an aluminum alloy and we'll just do 1060 aluminum to start. We'll hit apply in this menu. And our part slightly changed color. So it's now looks like aluminum and it has the properties of the aluminum right here. We can right click edit material or configure or remove the material. From here, we can also look at now the properties. So if we go to the tools menu and scroll down, we can see evaluate. And we're going to click mass properties. From mass properties, we get a ton of uh, information like center of mass, our volume, the actual mass of the um, part. And we can do a lot a lot more with it, but it's good to know that this exists and how you can find this. Don't forget to save your part. The last step we're going to do is we're going to sketch uh, an extrusion on this side. So click sketch and let's use a corner rectangle. We can align that with the top of our part and then just draw arbitrary value. We know that the smart dimension, this is going to be one inch, 0.75. And I want to make sure this stays in the center. So the easiest way to do that is to find the center here, hold control, and then I can find the center of my line. If it's hard to find the center of this line because we're over top of it, we can take a point and then roll over here until we get the midpoint, boom, and then add that point. So I'll take these two points and coincident then. And now I know that the center of this rectangle is always centered on this part. All right, I'll exit my sketch. I'll hit features. I will do an extruded cut. And I can do an extruded cut just to one face by selecting up to next and hitting check. Or I can right click, edit my feature, and I can do a through all and make sure it goes through both. Here I can go to tools, 
and evaluate mass properties and see how much I lost just by taking that cutaway. Don't forget to save your part. This has been completed.